What is up YouTube, Fubar VR here, back with another video for your enjoyment. Today, we're going to be playing Tactical Assault VR, which is a realistic tactical shooter currently available on App Lab for Quest 2 devices and is also available via Steam for PC VR beginning March 27th, 2023. This game is being developed by a solo developer and has evolved exponentially over the past few months. Both co-op and PvP modes are currently available as of the posting of this video. Co-op missions include Hostage Rescue and Bomb Defusal. Additionally, cross-play between Quest 2 Standalone and PC VR will be supported once the game releases into early access on Steam. Weapons and kits are able to be customized prior to deployment, and full weapon adjustment along the X, Y, and Z axes is implemented in this game. Graphics quality is low compared to some other VR shooters, but the lack of beauty is made up for by the immersion and realism provided in this fantastic tactical experience. If you haven't done so yet, give this game a shot by purchasing it on the Quest 2 App Lab or through Steam once it becomes available. Now that we got this part out of the way, let's get to it. Today, I'll be playing alongside Big Daddy, a retired law enforcement officer who dedicated 33 years of his life to public service, with 18 of those years as a SWAT operator. I'll let him get into his background more once we jump in the game. As for myself, I have 10 years of law enforcement experience with 5 years working on a gang team and two years attached to a federal gang and narcotics task force. I am also a certified firearms, defensive tactics, and use of force instructor. Both Big Daddy and I have over 40 years of combined law enforcement experience and have served numerous search warrants throughout our lives. However, his time on SWAT exposed him to many more scenarios, such as barricaded, hostage, and dynamic high-risk situations. I briefly go into our backgrounds not to brag about our experience or accomplishments, but to show that we are able to utilize real-world tactics we have learned in this realistic, well-developed tactical VR shooter. This game is still in early access at the time of this recording, and there are bugs still being ironed out. So if you see Big Daddy or myself fumbling over in-game items or dropping things from our inventory, please don't let that be a reflection of our real-world experience. Mistakes do occur in real-life situations, but I can assure you they are far less common than what is experienced in an early access VR shooter. Lastly, we are heading downrange as a two-person team. Ideally, we would be heading into these scenarios with more than just two operators, as there are many angles and areas that need to be covered at any given time. But we will make do with what we have. As always, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like, comment, and or subscribe. Thank you for watching, and remember, slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. All right, what's going on, Big Daddy? Not too much, ready to play this game. All right, so we are using in-game comms, so it's gonna be a little bit grainy on the video probably when you're talking. Mine will probably be clear because I'm recording my mic. Um, go ahead and give just a little background of who you are, uh, training, experience, things like that. Retired law enforcement, 31 years. 18 of those on SWAT. Okay. And it was uh, city law enforcement, correct? City police? Yes. Okay. And then you also did maritime law enforcement for the United States Coast Guard, correct? Correct. All right. And then in your law enforcement career, did you ever have to deal with like hostage situations, barricaded suspects, things like that? Yes. Numerous. Okay. I actually have done several okay. hostage rescue operations all right and you've also had active shooter situations as well correct correct all right so we're at the kill house today we're i'm going to put paper targets in the kill house shoot no shoot shoot are going to be the black targets the silhouette not no shoot are going to be the white um we're going to start clearing it and then after we clear this we'll launch into the actual mission of the game okay yes all right so, for purposes of approaching, let's just say this is out of bounds. We'll say that the main house, the orangish yellow color right there is the main house. Um, we would number the sides when we're approaching, correct? If we're drawing up like a tech, an ops plan. This front side is going to be the one side. Left side will be two going in a clockwise fashion, right? So it'll be one side right here, two, three is always going to be the rear. And then the four side will be on the right side, correct? Looking at the house. Correct. If you're looking at it from the front. Basically, think of it looking at it from the top. Okay. Like the square right here. Okay. 
If I'm standing here and this is the front of the house, that'd be side one. Okay. Side two, side three, side four. Okay. And then this corner right here, because this is the one and that's the two side, what's that corner called? The one, two corner. One, two. And then the two, three right here. Two, three. Correct. Yep. Three, four. And then the four, one or the one, four, right? Yes. Okay. And um, then we have lower level or ground level. Then if you have a second story, that would be, of course, your second level, third okay. level if it's a third story. All right. And then openings are going to be labeled right, I'm sorry, left to right, like we read. In other words, if I had a window, it would be one opening. A door in the center would be the second opening. Third opening would be another window. So it would be opening one, opening two, opening three, side one. Okay. All right, so it looks like it's an inward opening door. Okay, based on the, the door the door jam and everything, Hinges right? on the right, knob on the left, so it will swing inward from inward from my side to your side. Okay. So in, in this case, since we're we got two options, we line up on opposing sides like we are right now. Or regardless if we're depending on what side tactically we want to be on, this would be on one side, we could be on this side, or both of us could come over here and be on this side. Okay. And depends we on the layout of the building plus what we have as threats further down behind us. You have to read okay. everything as you go in and it's constantly changing. <clears throat> okay. And then if we were approaching this way on opposite sides, I would not reach across the door to get the doorknob right. You would be operating the door? Yes, it's on my side. Okay. I'm going to pop the door for you, and you're going to slice it, slice right. the pie, right? Yes. Okay, door's popped. Okay. One Contact down. straight ahead. Copy. And Catch that door. Close. Yep. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. On you. Open door right. Open doors. We're doing this as a two-man team. Obviously, we would like more men um, to cover these doors behind us, right, and cover our rear. Same thing when we made that entry on the first door. We would probably want at least a couple more guys with us, right? Correct. But we have no friends, so we're going to do it on our own. All right. I'm working the door. Ready? Ready. Okay, it's locked. So now what what we what would we do now if it's locked? If I can get my gun. If we have more people. We'd post a man right here, let him watch it so nobody comes through it, and we would take the other two doors and try those. If all okay. three are locked, we take a door, breach it, go in, and then continue on. Okay. And we have a breaching hammer. You have a breaching shotgun. So we'll, for the first locked door, we'll use the breaching hammer. All right. So as I'm breaching, so you're holding you cover. We you said we're clearing this as a building clear as opposed to Hotch's Rescue, so I'm going to hold after you breach. I'll hold on the open door and then wait for you to arm. Okay. Ready? Ready. Bre breaching. Okay, I'm up. Uh, your right corner is clear. Shallow. Clear. Closed door left. Cross or, yep. I'm going to go uh, high-low. So for high low, I'm going to go low. Obviously, you're over the top of me. I know that you're behind me with your gun up, so I cannot pop up. Correct. Ready? Okay. Ready. And it is the exit door, and that door glitched. It's clear. Right. This is the exit. Yep. Let's... All right, I'm ready. Good. On you. I'm going to pie it. Up. Okay. Shallow corner left, deep corner right, on me. Ready? Ready. Clear right. If we were going to flashbang this room, how would, how would we do it? Inward opening door. You could have your flashbang out, open it from here, throw it in while I'm covering you from the right-hand side. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go on that side. I'll work the door, work the flashbang. Once the flashbang goes off, we enter after, right? Right. Or okay. I could open the door for you, push it in. You throw a bang in. But the only problem with that with two people is one of us isn't gonna have a gun up if one's working the door, and the else we go to pistol. Right. But if I had a third man, so you could you could work the door. 
I could do the flashbang on this side, and the third man could have the gun up, right, for my cover. Third man right can here. be cover, yeah. Okay. So let's work it. I'll work it from this side uh, with the flashbang. Um, one thing I do just want to talk about real quick. If, let's say you're point man, right? And we're going to make a dynamic entry on the door after the flashbang goes off. Let's say we come up with a plan before where you say, once we go in, I'm going to go right. And you go first, but you end up going left instead. Do I read off of you, even though you went the wrong way? Yes, you always read off the, the first man in. First man, because the first man's first never man wrong. First man can make no mistake. Right. Okay, so even you know, if you... He's going to get into the room. First man will enter the room. Based on what he sees, he might start on a what we call a crisscross from this side of the door to the other side. But if I see something and I have to turn and engage and I end up doing a button hook, then you would have to come in and read off that and do another button hook so you'll end up on the inside corner. Okay. Perfect. All right, so... I'm going to work the door, throw the flashbang, and I'll grab my gun again, okay? All right. Okay. Open it. Doors open. Bang in. Back straight ahead. Clear right. Close door left. Close door straight ahead. Now, before we proceed, I'm going to reload. And what do you, what do you call this reload? Tactical reload. Because I already have... I didn't run out of rounds, I didn't go empty, or what's considered a malfunction on the weapon. So what I'm doing is freshening my mag by putting a new one in. Okay, and if this had easier mechanics to do, we'd probably save that mag, right? Or put it into like a, a pouch that we know Correct. that there's still rounds in it, we just don't know how many rounds. Right. And or I can look at it, but the bottom line is it's not a full mag. Right. And then so if... We were shooting, right? We were engaged, and gun went dry, stopped shooting. We have to dump the mag and put a new new mag in, and we call that the emergency reload. Correct. Or you transition, which is fastest or you and transition. the best thing to do. Right. All right. Which would be to so. drop, not drop my weapon if it's long, or at least move it out of the way like this, and then, no, nope, I don't want a flashbang. Nope. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. And then pull up my gun. Okay. And on emergency reload, when we're dumping that mag, we, we're dumping it because it went dry. We're putting a fresh mag in. We don't care about that mag anymore. It's empty. It's gone. It's done with. Wherever it lands, we're not trying to keep those that mag with us. No. Okay. All right. On you. If, um, if we had a five, six-man team and I was the breacher, right? Let's say you were uh, running the team, point man or calling a locked door for me. I'm going to breach, right? So when I breach, because I have the breaching tool, I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to be last man now, right? Because right. everybody with weapons up um, is entering before me. So I'm just falling out of line, even though I'm point right now, essentially, with the breaching tool. I'll breach, fall back, everybody flows in, I secure my breaching tool, and then I come in last man, right? Correct. And then usually last man, I'm probably going to be covering the rear. I'll be rear security. And then you have to remember, you have to get out of the way. Yeah. So I'll do that right now. Just so stack up you... behind me. Um, just so we can kind of run through it. Stack up behind me like everybody was stacked on me. Your cover. I'll breach it. I'll get out of the way. I'll secure my wet, my um, breaching tool. Flow in behind you and I'll take rear security. All right? All right. Breaching. For like night missions or dark rooms, things like that. If uh, let's pretend like it was going to be a dark room, right? We're both flashlights on. So as if we it was a dark room, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, but as we enter, if my flashlight's on, are you silhouetting me? And by silhouette, are you shining light behind me and basically giving the suspect a target to shoot at with the silhouette that's created, or are you turning your light off and then? Once we flood the room, we're activating flashlights. Obviously, I'm point man, so my flashlight's going to be on. But what what do you do in that situation? Well, what we don't have here that we had in real life were pressure switches. Right. So all I had to do was squeeze harder in order to put the light on. 
relax my squeeze or my grip, and it would turn the light off. So if you were going to cross in front of me, so then we'll I just, would let it off, okay. let you go in. We'll just go slow. So I'm going in. I have flashlight on. Once I cross the threshold, and you're entering behind me, and then, then you're activating your on. flashlight. Okay. Yep. And that's okay. And that's just so I don't Flash, like I said. Flashlight. Flashlight. Illuminate a dark area. Flashlights can blind your suspects inside, but they can also light up a hallway and let people know you're coming. So it all depends tactically what you're trying to achieve. In other words, if you want complete darkness and stealth and you're moving in that manner, then you don't want flashlights on at all. But when you get into darkness, that's why you have night vision capability also. Right. It depends what your mission is, what your objective is, and your scenario.